Hello, I'm Mrs. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Overview of Catholic Church History. Discover the amazing story of the Church together as a family as you color and paste your way through the timeline and printables, which you can find on our website. And now, let's move into our topic for today. Hello, I'm Mr. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Catholic History video series. Today is topic number 18, the Edict of Milan. If you look on your timeline and summary question sheets, you'll notice that we are in the red time period, which we have named persecution. This is the last video in the red time period. If you don't have a timeline or summary question sheets, you can find them on our website. Have you ever suffered from something for a long time, not knowing when it would end? For example, have you ever had a headache or a burn or a cut that just hurt a lot? Sometimes it seems that the pain will never end, but then after a while, you realize the pain is gone. Maybe you took some medicine or maybe the pain just faded away. I know that I was just sick with a cough for a long time and I felt like I would never get better. You can probably hear my raspy voice in previous videos. Well, anyway, a couple of days ago, I woke up and suddenly I felt much better. If you can imagine this, then you can imagine a little bit what it was like for Christians who had endured the persecution of Diocletian. If you remember from the previous videos, there were 10 persecutions of Christians by the Roman Empire. The 10th persecution, the worst one, was by Emperor Diocletian. He unleashed a horrible torture and executions of Christians. I am sure that those Christians were praying for it to stop. Well, just as suddenly as it started, it stopped. Do you remember how it stopped? It was stopped by something called the Edict of Milan. I'm sure you also remember St. Helena and her son Constantine. Constantine eventually became the emperor of the entire Roman Empire, and with his power, he finally put an end to the terrible persecution of Diocletian. Let's take a closer look at the Edict of Milan and see what it said and what it did. First of all, Constantine and another emperor named Licinius, they met in the year 313 in a Roman city called Mediolanum. That city is still around today, but it has a different name. Today, the city of Mediolanum is called Milan, and you can visit it someday if you ever go to Italy. It was there that Constantine issued his famous edict, the Edict of Milan. Some people think that the Edict of Milan made Christianity the only religion in the Roman Empire, but that's not true. The Edict of Milan did not make pagan religions illegal. Instead, the Edict of Milan only made Christianity legal. Now, after the Edict of Milan, all religions were allowed in the Roman Empire, both the true one, the Catholic faith, and all the other pagan and false religions. It wouldn't be till much later, in the year 380 AD, that the Catholic faith would be the only religion of the Roman Empire. But we'll talk about that in a later video. The Edict of Milan didn't just make Christianity legal and stop the persecutions. It also did more. Emperor Constantine also decreed that all of the property that was stolen or damaged during the persecution of Diocletian was to be restored to the Christians. That means that Christians who had their money stolen, their houses burnt down, their jobs taken away, or their businesses destroyed, they all received money to make up for their losses. Who was going to pay that money to the Christians? It was mostly the pagans who had to pay back money to the Christians. This was a very big deal for Christians, and the Edict of Milan was such an important part of Catholic history. Now Mrs. Charity will show you the city of Milan on a map, and talk about its ancient name of Mediolanum. Hello! If you ever travel to Italy, you might want to visit the city of Milan. Milan is one of the biggest and most important cities in Italy, but it also has a very ancient history. 
During the time of the ancient Roman Empire, it was not called Milan, but Mediolanum. Don't those two names sound similar? Milan and Mediolanum. The name Mediolanum is a Latin name that means in the middle of the open fields. The Romans named it that because there are flat open fields all around Milan. There are no mountains or valleys. This is not an important thing to know, but it is interesting. I like to learn little bits of history like that. Do you? Welcome back. I thought that since we are talking about the Edict of Milan today, I might as well read you some of the actual words from Constantine's Edict. They will be hard to understand, but if you really listen and you ask your parents to explain it, you'll be able to understand it. The first part I will read is the part where Constantine makes Christianity legal. I'll read that right now. Therefore, your worship should know that it has pleased us to remove all conditions whatsoever which were in the rescripts formerly given to you officially concerning the Christians, and now any one of these who wishes to observe Christian religion may do so freely and openly, without molestation. We thought it fit to commend these things most fully to your care. We have given to these Christians free and unrestricted opportunity of religious worship. So that was Constantine saying that Christianity was now legal and no one could hurt them for being Christians or going to Mass. Now the second part I will read is the part in which he tells the pagans to give back all of the property that was stolen from the Christians. And I'll read that now. Moreover, in the case of the Christians, especially we esteemed it best to order that if it happens anyone heretofore has brought from our treasury from anyone whatsoever those places where they were previously accustomed to assemble, concerning which a certain decree had been made in a letter sent to you officially. The same shall be restored to the Christians, without payment of any claim or recompense, and without any kind of fraud or deception. Now that part was hard to understand, but Constantine was saying that if anyone had Christian property that was stolen from the Christians, they had to give it back for free, and the Christians didn't have to pay to get it back. So you see, the Edict of Milan made Christianity legal again and stopped the persecutions, and it also restored all of the money and property the Christians had stolen from them by the pagan Romans. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for being with us. Make sure to join us in our next video, which is the start of a whole new time period, the orange one. We'll talk about all of the churches that were built after the Edict of Milan. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. Visit our website, www.GloriousHeritageCartoons.com, where you can find more educational supplements, cartoons, books, and printables. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to get notified of our latest updates and videos. And if you like our work and want to support us, you can make a donation on our website or on Patreon. We really appreciate your generosity and kindness. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, and see you next time.